Hey, what's up, people of God? This is Pastor Matt with Believers in Christ Church, the people's pastor, here with another episode of Saints in Society. Oh, man, we live. What's up, people of God? This is Pastor Matt with Believers in Christ Church, the people's pastor, here with our first episode of Saints in Society. I'm going to give y'all some time to come in. I got my man, uh, Minister uh, Quinn Howard, on with us today. Come on, on in. Man. Come on in, people of God. Man, I feel special, bro. I, I knew that you, you did the Facebook thing. I didn't realize this was your first episode. Yeah, this is the first one, man. I figured, you know, we're going to. Now, we did a, uh, we we got some pre tape shows that's coming out, man. But we're usually going to, um, we're usually going to show them on Tuesdays. You know, it's usually when I'm going to do it. Either we go, you know, the lives will be like a little special, you know, but we're normally going to do them on, on Tuesday nights. Um, just kind of share with the people, man, you know. It's good, cool, man. I ain't got no pressure. I ain't got nobody to <clears throat> I ain't got nobody to compete. compete nah, with nah, you can just do you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no I ain't got no episodes to go up against. Nah, you could you could you could man, if you want to start singing or something, I mean you can do whatever, bro. I know everybody waiting, everybody feeling for a praise break to break out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I see people getting creative, man. They got the DJs around. Uh, doing their DJ thing. Mm -hmm. I see yeah. At the, at the beginning, people was going around. This is before it got crazy. They was going around singing on por porches. So they was definitely getting it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's what the Saints do, man. Folk know how to figure stuff out. I seen all that. The um, what do you call it? The uh, the uh, the DJs going and stuff, man. A lot. The Facebook parties and the, the Instagram parties. I seen all that, man. You know. So it's been good, man. These these are times when people have been able to be uh be creative you know what i'm saying you gotta be creative man this puts you it's put your back against the wall yep it's different you know, times, so. man. It's different now you're times. gonna figure out you're mm -hmm. gonna figure out what's going on you're gonna figure out what's really going on within you that's right that's right this is it man this is this is the no more show this is really what it is you know this is the truth right here well so what's going on people of god again this is pastor matt with believers in christ the people's pastor I'm here with Minister Quinn Howard on our first episode of Saints and Society, our first live episode of Saints and Society. I got my man here. We've been talking about doing this for a while, man. So, um, Minister Quinn, if you can go ahead and, and uh, you know, introduce yourself to some, reintroduce yourself to others, man, and just, you know, I'm real appreciative, first of all, you coming on here, man, with me. But if you could just, you know, tell the people who you are, brother. No, I appreciate it, man. Well, <clears throat> first off, like you said, We've been trying to do this for a minute mm -hmm. and I've been looking forward to it because it was one of those things where even before this Corona took place, I think you and I both kind of knew that there was a shift taking place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we, we kind of already knew that you, you had to change your game plan in order to reach people. That's right. Uh, and so it's just funny how this is all working out. Uh, not that the virus is funny by no means. Yeah. But, that, you know, um, we kind of already foresee the, foresaw this coming. But uh, anyway, my name is Quinn. Uh, I ain't going to be long, man. I'm just a regular dude. Mm -hmm. I'm a dude uh, from York, uh, married, got three kids. Uh, just a dude who, who loves to, mm -hmm. to grow and become better. Um, by no means am I perfect. Uh, but I try to put myself in situations where not only can I inspire and encourage other people, um, but um, make sure that I'm being an example for my family. So, yeah. That's really who I am, man. I'm a man who likes to grow and likes to help other people grow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's key, man. I remember when we, the first time we dialogued, man, I don't even know if you remember, but you had called my phone. I guess I, we hadn't known each other, but you were looking at, like, you were buying houses or something like that. I think you were flipping houses or you was doing something, man, with houses. And you had called and we were dialoguing about that. And I, and I, I had you saved in my phone as Quinn, the real estate investor. That's how I had you. That's how I had you saved. You know what I mean? And then I think we were doing a um, a chewing chat at the church. You know, Sister Selena likes to do these uh, these chewing chats where it's like a like an open mic where people can come up and they could do spoken word, they could do mime, they could sing, they do all kind of stuff. And I was just texting people to invite, and I saw your name and I just I just shot you out a text and invited you and whatnot. And um and you came through, man, and we started dialoguing. And I mean, it's like been history since then, man. Like we, you know, I guess maybe once a week, every other week, at least we, you know, we at least try to chop it up for a couple minutes. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Cause when you sent that text, 
that same night, uh, Kenny, uh, brother Kenny, who does the rapping. Yeah, yeah, brother Kenneth, that's my man. Yeah, so I um I know his wife's family very well. Okay. So it was crazy that Sister he King. had reached out that same night. So it was almost like I knew it was confirmation that I had to go to that event between you mm -hmm. reaching out and him reaching out. But um, like you said, man, real recognizes real. So I think that yeah. uh, that was definitely on purpose, man, that we were supposed to meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, man. We got a lot of things in common, man, you know, with the ministry and leadership and just teaching and just really being truth seekers. So, I mean, I think this is pretty cool that we kind of get, get to give people a little insight into how our dialogue is, you know what I mean? And and we don't have a format set up today. I don't have any uh, uh, set plan. I just want to let the Holy Spirit kind of reign, man, and just, you know, just let us dialogue and see where, where the Holy Spirit takes us, man. Yeah, I'm all about that. I tell people all the time, listen, bro, you can you can do your videos and edit mm -hmm. them, but it's a whole nother thing when you go live. Yeah, 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 that's right. So, so yeah, I thought this was a good idea that people could see that whether we say ums and ahs or whatever comes out, that is real. It is what it is. That's right. That's right, man. So, so, so tell us about how you came to Christ, man. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think you was from our conversation. You wasn't like born out the womb, loving the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, me neither. So, you know, we all got a little past and a little history and whatnot, but I think that's what makes us real. You know, I've always have, I always have an affinity for people that um, might not necessarily been spoon fed Christ, from the from the you know what I mean from the crib, but came to Christ on their own understanding, man, and their own realization as a grown man or a grown woman. So, can you tell us about that, man? Like a little bit about your upbringing and and, and how uh, you transitioned into or gave your life up to Christ, man. Yeah, yeah, nah, man, you're funny, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely wasn't coming out the wound loving God. Uh, but the good thing is, when I look back on my life, man, He was loving me from that moment. Come on. And, and and it's crazy because my mom, she did the best she could, man. I had I had good people in my life that did what they knew what to do. Mm -hmm. But we weren't the family that that went to church on Sundays. Like Sunday was for sleeping in, football, whatever. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. it wasn't definitely for getting up and getting dressed and going to no building. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of my life, man, I had no idea what that building was except for just what it is, a building. Okay. And what happened, and this is funny how God begins to just prick at you and, and you don't see this until you look back on your life but I ended up playing football okay so when I ended up playing football uh, one of my best friends still to this day Dennis we ended up getting really close now he was the total opposite of me like he was he was the dude who came out I always tell him he, was, he came out the womb preaching okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. he was uh um you know by no means would he ever say he was perfect but you know his family uh, I always knew them to be the family that was different you know what I mean? And when I say different, different in a good way. Like there was, there was something special about them, man. And I didn't, I didn't know what it was outside of them just being nice. Mm -hmm. But as we continued to develop a relationship, and he became my best friend. I mean, I was always, I was at the crib all the time. Wow. And I'll never forget uh, the one Saturday night, Mr. Buchanan. That's his dad. That's my man. But uh, he was working, and and I would always want to spend the night. Like I would be at his house, and I'd be like, man, you know what? We got to ask your mom can I spend the night. Mm -hmm. And Miss Buchanan, her being her, she was always like, you know, you got to ask your dad. Sure. <laughs> and so we always wanted to eliminate that. But the one uh, Sunday, I'll never forget this. And I don't even know if my boy, I'll get him to watch this. I don't even know if he remembers this. But his dad said I could spend the night, but I got to go to church the next day. Okay. Like that was the, that was the agreement. Can't remember exactly what age that was. I was just about I to ask what age, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that was somewhere between nine and 12 years old somewhere in that range okay um somewhere yeah somewhere around there so anyway i go to church that next morning and and i just remember thinking like man this thing is long and it's long and <laughs> it was it was long and 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 it wasn't really boring now uh -huh. that i look back on it but at that time i didn't understand it so sure. for me just sitting in a place and not being able to do what i wanted to do um, in my mind, I just went ahead and just called it boring. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was my experience. And I just couldn't understand like these people singing and dancing. And I had no idea what they were talking about, especially when the preacher came out. And it's so crazy that I used to think ministers were the most boring people on the earth, man. And years later, God would have me as a minister. Mm -hmm. and so anyway, with that being said, man, that was my first taste of understanding what, what the church building was like. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I never forget as I kept hanging around them, I began to see that, wow, they're, they're not just like that on, on, on those Sundays. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? And so <laughs> fast forward, I've always stayed in connection. Even when we got to high school, we kind of stopped hanging as much, uh, but we always were family men. And so I always had, you know, a family, so to speak, that I can look at. And I always knew that they were different. So it was one of those things where once I got a taste, I knew that I could never tell myself that I didn't have that taste. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what happens is life goes on, uh, ended up being, you know, really close to another best friend of mine who unfortunately uh, he was uh, murdered uh -huh. when he was uh, yeah. 19, man. And, you know, rest in peace to Ben. Yeah. yeah. But I remember when you were in college, I think, right? I read that yeah, somewhere. Was, I was coming back from college. So it was, it was right when I came back from uh, what would have been my first year of college. So anyway, with that being said, I had already had a taste. I knew, I knew right from wrong. You know what I mean? We all know. We all know when we're doing things we shouldn't be doing. So I knew I wasn't living the life of a quote unquote church boy by no means. Um, and I knew that, you know what I'm saying? I knew, I knew what I was doing wasn't, wasn't the best things to be doing, sure. but something happened to me, man, when, when um, my best friend had, how, when he was murdered. And so when he was murdered, man, I can't explain it, bro but I knew that I needed to change something. And yeah. I'll never forget at that moment, even though I had went to church with, with the Buchanan's a couple of times, I realized that like, man, you know what? Maybe I need to figure out what's really going on with this, with this guy. Yeah. And so I didn't jump into a church building, but what happened was God works in mysterious ways, bro. And, and it's crazy how we're having this conversation because he won't come at you the way that he knows won't be attracted to you. Mm, okay. You know and and mm -hmm. that's why, where we're going with this, and I'm sure we'll get into this, you got to, you got to come, God got to be able to use you in a way that's attractive at the beginning to that person. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know I mean? This is why we got to become all things. So yeah, God, sent a, God sent a man that offered a business opportunity to me. And when he offered the business opportunity, it was the first time I ever was introduced to uh, marketing. Okay. And so I went to this meeting, had no idea what the heck I was doing, but I was attracted to it, man. Like it was like, these people were positive. It was mm -hmm. the first time I ever heard of, of personal development. Like I had no, I didn't know there was a such thing as personal development. Um, I knew you could personally be developed, but I didn't know they had people out here teaching this kind of stuff. Sure. So leadership was at the forefront. I saw married couples. I saw young people that were opening doors for ladies, like just, just good people, bro. Just doing and it. I, yeah. Not that I wasn't around, not that I wasn't around good people. But I wasn't around, I didn't see certain things I was seeing in this room around these people. So I get into the business and I'm not, we, we don't even have to get into the business part, but long story short, sure. I fall in love with, with, with serving and falling in love with going after this business and trying to win. And I just was like, man, this is it. So mm -hmm. I'm all the way in, bro. Like I'm talking about, I'm going hard at the business okay. to the point where like, I'm like, listen, whatever they say to do, not that they were my guide, but I'm going to follow the, I'm going to follow the game plan. Yeah. And one of the things that a lot of people fought at this time was they said, uh, you can do all the stuff you want to do, but you got to come to our conferences and we have them, you know, three to four times a year. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't have the money to really go to the conference like that. Okay. So, but I went to that first conference and, and they had their meeting on Friday. They had their meetings on Saturday and then they had an optional church service on Sunday. So I said everything I just said to just wrap around, to bring it to this point. I come, I come to this uh, conference and I decide on that Sunday morning, you know what? I'm going to go to this church service, man. I, don't, yeah. I, I didn't know what it was, but something was telling me just to wake up and go. <laughs> that was what I'm telling you. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know that then, but I went to this church service, man. Thousands of people were there. And at the time, I was like, there was a lot of pride. Like, I'm not walking down this aisle in front of all these people. There's no way. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my mind, I can do this on the low. I'm going to do it in private. I'm going to do it where people don't really know I'm doing it. But God like had a whole different game plan. And yeah. so the pastor, I got up there, delivered his message. It was powerful. But at the end, he did an altar call. Okay. And I felt like even though I was in row Z, I felt like he was talking directly to me, man. It was just like, it's like he took a rope from the stage and just wow. shot it back. And I'm telling you, like, literally, like, I, I'm out, this is God's honest truth, man. I'm keeping it 100. I was like holding my chair, like, and literally trying to not go. Yeah, but something was pulling me, and so I went down, and um, of course I gave my life to Christ. Man, it was like a million pounds just lifted off my shoulder. So 
that that um is the story of how I led myself down to uh, Christ finding me. That's good, man. Good. And even even in that story, man, I see even before you came to Christ, it was about keeping your obligations. You see what I'm saying? Like the first time when you was with your boy, your best friend, and his father said, well, you can stay tonight if you go to church. So you, I mean, you could have stayed the night and bounced, you know what I'm saying? But you stayed the night and you fulfilled your obligation. It was a business opportunity. And they were like, well, you know, there's church on Sunday. You fulfilled the obligation. And I think that was, that's part of like the innate character that God built in you to fulfill obligations. You know what I mean? Just that moral character of, 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 of just doing what is right, you know, um, like, like it says, like God, we, we are all made in the image of God and God has given to every man a measure of faith. We all got different levels. He put down different measurements in the sum, but I just believe that that was um, sort of revealing of your character and God rewarded you um, by bringing you, by bringing you to Christ, man, opening up your blind eyes and open up the eyes of your understanding, you know, turning your heart of uh, stone into a heart of flesh, washing you, cleansing you, man, and welcome you into the household of the faithful. Amen, bro. It was a process, man, but it definitely, um, it definitely was nothing but God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, how, how have you seen um, Christ work in your life, man? Because I know a lot of times we hear the pastor will say, oh, man, come to Christ and won't nothing never happen to you. Or, uh, you know, you'll never experience another bad day or, 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 or come to Christ and, you know, life will be a bed of roses and stuff like that, man. How has Christ worked in your life, in, in the life of Quinn, man? You know what I mean? You gave your life to the Lord. Was everything all rosy after that, man? Or, 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 or you know, how did Christ bring you uh, down the, 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 let's say, down the, your path, man, your race, right? Uh, uh, how did he bring you from new convert to now being a minister, a man of God that preaches the word? <laughs> no, it's funny because even though we know that Christ paid the price, right? Um, so we can never do anything to earn it. That's right. Uh, but if I had to describe my journey, what I would say was it's almost like when you get a free trial. Mm. Like, like it's cool when you get something and you're on that free trial. And you're loving it, and it seemed like, man, this thing is good. These movies are good. The shows are good. Whatever it is, is good. Yeah. But it's when that first bill comes. Okay. You're like, oh, shoot. Like, now it don't feel the same. Okay. You about to and preach, bro. Like, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I felt, <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I, I felt like, man, for a while, it was like, it just felt good. It was just, you know what I mean? Walking around, just nothing could go wrong. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, real life showed up. Yeah, yeah. So, um. To me, it was the opposite of what I think that most people probably think it's going to be like. Like, I think that's sometimes the lie that we got to replace with truth is that if people think that, hey, when I get myself together, then I'll come, man. Then, you know, I'll come, I'll come exactly. get ready. And it's like, listen, even if you got yourself together, trust me when I tell you, it's going to get real. That's so, right. yeah, the, the journey's been real, bro. It's been um, very, very challenging. It's been the hardest, by far, the hardest walk of my life. That I said wow. yes to. Wow, wow. Now I know you play ball, man. You play ball in high school. You're a real talented ball player. You play ball in you went to Kutztown, I think, right? Yeah, I ended up. Uh, I was supposed to go to Holy Cross. <clears throat> it was my only Division One scholarship. Wow. And and uh, just didn't do what I needed to do on my end. I ended up going to Kutztown. Okay. And in my mind at that time, because I didn't go D1 and because I was too immature to understand that it wasn't even that serious. Yeah, I kind of went to Kutztown, man, and didn't handle, you know, what I needed to handle and ended up just dropping out. But, yeah, I was there for a little bit. Okay, okay. So um, let me ask you this, man. Being that you were at Kutztown and you, you dealt with some issues there before Christ, right, could you um, maybe – how would you have handled them differently being in Christ? Like you said, you were kind of upset you didn't go D1, so, you know, you kind of fell into a rut or whatever, maybe making some bad decisions. Um, how could someone maybe in those same shoes now or somebody that's um, um, having decisions to make, how could the acceptance of Jesus Christ into their heart uh, prevent them from making maybe some similar mistakes that you made in the past? Man, it, I, I don't know if most people are going to want to hear this, but I'm going to be real. My experience at Kutztown, it was so crazy to me because it was the first time in my life that I was that far away. And mm -hmm. Even though I really wasn't that far away, like like being forty five minutes to to an hour away, like that in my mind, like I was I was real far. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, I was. Yeah. I had people around that could watch me, and now I'm on this campus with all of us that think we're grown, and it's just party at the party, and it's just like, hey, welcome to whatever you want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And so if I look back on that time, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I don't know me personally. I'm not saying everybody would have to go this route. I probably, because along this journey, I understand generational curses now. I understand my struggle. Not everybody has the same struggle. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, you may not have a struggle mm -hmm. where a campus like Kutztown could have really tempted you in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, just being how much of a, you know, a lot of how much partying was going on, this and that. I may not have picked that school. I may have picked a school where I would have been very, I would have been very particular on, on boundaries, man. And what was best to keep me mm. out of being in a place that, that I was weak at. Okay. Okay. You know that's good, man. Look, so, yeah. Dialogue on that, man. Boundaries. That's really good because, you know, Paul, look, Paul says, you know what I mean? All things are, are um, lawful, but not all things are expedient. Right. So that's what, when you, when you talk about boundaries, that's what that makes me think of. Can you kind of dialogue on that, man? Because a lot of times people say, oh, I'm saved by grace. And, and, and you know what I mean? God knows my heart. God will forgive me. You know what I mean? God knows how I really feel. You know, can, can you talk about that in reference to the boundaries that you were just kind of uh, describing there? Yeah. So my thing is this. Every school you go to or that you have the opportunity to choose from is always going to be sin available, right? So you're always going to, Paul said, evil was always present. Yeah. So you're always going to have it available to you. Mm -hmm. However, I believe you can put yourself in situations where you can say, where can I have it less available? Mm. You know what I mean? Good. Like yeah. a lot of times just being real, people will say, and, and by, I wasn't coming at Chris down like there, you know, it wasn't a shot at them. I'm just yeah, talking any about school. Yeah. yeah. So, but I don't know about you along my journey in conversations. Like if you brought up on the flip side and you say, oh, they need to go to a Christian school right away. People are like, oh, they just as bad there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they do just as much there right yeah and, and and i know stuff goes on there so i never ever was one to think that hey if you go to this school they just do everything right exactly right i, I know I, that you'd be a fool to think that but if i'm looking at my options so to dialogue what i'm saying is that if i said okay here's my struggle my struggle is going to be harder if i go to a school where it seemed like they really don't talk about trying to stay away from it mm-hmm Versus if I would go to the school where my struggle is still going to be present. Yeah. But at least I hear people and see more people trying to stay away from that struggle. Yeah. 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 You know what I, mean? yeah like, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I know like, and I don't say this, you know, if somebody's out there struggling with drinking, please don't take this the wrong way. I'm just using this as an example. A person who struggles, they may have that thorn the rest of their life. That may be mm -hmm. something that tries to get them the rest of their life. Right. Yeah. They're going to do better. By not hanging at wine and spirits versus hanging there. No mm -hmm. matter how strong, no matter how built up they get, no matter how yep. Holy Spirit filled and sanctified, they're going to probably do better if they stay the heck away from wine and spirits. Yeah. Versus if they go to a place that got a wine and spirits on campus. There you go. That's right. You know so yeah. that, that would be my thing is that you got to be you got to be extreme. And I think that people play this game too much of this gray area. And when it comes down to your journey with Christ. I'm not saying that you should be so holier than ever that you're no earthly good. But I believe when it comes to your struggles, you got to be extreme. Like there is no gray area. You can't, the Bible says don't play with temptation. That's right. He said, you know he said the guy that's lukewarm, he spews out his mouth. You got hot or cold, one or the other. Yeah, yeah. So you got to, I mean, the thing about it is more people got to be real with this stuff. Like, you know, you struggle with women or you struggle with this or whatever. Don't put yourself in that situation. Like you got to be extreme because you know if you don't, you have a lot more years before Christ where you didn't even fight that battle. Yeah, yeah. So and I, and I think, I about it. oh, good. What I was going to say, I think that has a lot to do with, like, accountability. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times um, people, um, they don't want to be accountable to anybody, right? Like, I know, I know, uh, um, like, I got friends that are, that might be in leadership, right? And I definitely want to talk to you a little bit about leadership today as well, man. But I know friends that are in leadership that won't even submit to anybody else. You know what I mean? Like they won't, they won't be accountable to anybody else. They won't have an accountability team, right? Like I've, I've always thought it's important, like as a pastor, like right now, um, our church is not part of any particular organization, right? Um, so, so what I've done is, is I've surrounded myself with certain pastors that I like to dialogue with that are, um, have been and have done things that I would like to see my ministry do. You know what I'm saying? So um, 
like I'm, I'm not gonna throw the names out, but I, I, I put myself around a couple of different pastors that I like to rock with, I like to dialogue with, I can call, I can ask them something. They probably, they, they've been where I wanna go. They've done some of the things that I wanna do. Um, and I think sometimes we, we get on these, these, these rogue instances where we wanna be a Christian all by ourselves, and, 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 and we wanna study all by ourselves. But you know, the Bible says, how could you understand unless it was a preacher, you know what I mean? So it's good to dialogue, it's, it's good to study on our own. It's good to get self-revelation, uh, um, but we also need accountability. I need to be able to call my brother and say, look, man, I'm, I'm struggling with women right now. You know what I'm saying? Or, yo, man, I'm struggling with uh, uh, drinking too much. I'm struggling with, 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 with ill thoughts or, or jealousy, whatever it is, and be able to dialogue with somebody without feeling that um, I'm going to be looked at crazy, without feeling that um, the church folk, all of a sudden I'm going to lose my title or I'm going to lose my favorite seat in the church. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so I think accountability is important where we can just be brothers and sisters in Christ and, and, and not have to worry about the show of church. You know what I mean? Can, can you dialogue on that for a little bit? Yeah, no, I think it's important, man. I think um, it goes back to the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. I was sharing this last night. I had a couple of people. We were doing a little Bible study together. Nice. Uh, Nothing major, man, but it was powerful with a few people. That's and good, so, bro. That's as, we were talking, as we were talking, uh, we, we went back to, I went to Genesis. And we started talking about how when Adam went away, God said, where are you? And he already knew where he was, right? So he just wanted him back. It was just accountability. Like, hey, come mm -hmm. back. You know what I'm saying? We got to be, we got to be, we got to be together. Like, you, you're separated from me right now. So mm -hmm. all the way from the beginning of time, it was never that God wasn't willing to forgive you or God didn't love you or God, you know, wanted to just throw everything in your face. He just knew that, listen, don't run. Like, if you're struggling, you're going through, so don't run from me. Like, yeah. I already know where you are. Come back to me, bro. Like, like yeah. come back. Let's, let's get back into relationship. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Let me hold you accountable. Let me, let, me have, let me put that conviction back in you. That's right. Um, and so we see all the way from the beginning all the way to now, bro, it's in 2020, like, even myself, when I see that I haven't called people as much as I need to, I start to realize that, man, this battle is getting harder and harder. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and then I know I see my life when, when I'm in, in great communication, when I'm on my game, when I'm talking to my brothers in Christ on a regular basis. So uh, definitely, man, when it comes down to what we talked about a couple of minutes ago, whether you're at college or whether you just work in a job and got a family, uh, has nothing to do with you being a pastor or having any title. That's like, right. The, the bottom line is like, listen, we all have fallen short of the glory of God. Come on. So you may not have a sin that, you know, that people know about. Mm -hmm. You may not have a struggle that people know about, but you're struggling with something. That's right. You know what I mean? And so whatever it is that you struggle, like you need somebody. We all need somebody, bro. We, we are, um, we're definitely better together. So like, yeah. I'm huge on accountability, man. Like, yeah. and not only just being accountable, like being, being real, like you said, like yeah. you got to have some people. Um, and I know you can't share it with everybody, you know what I'm sure. saying? Because we yeah. know that uh, you gotta you know be I mean? care, you gotta be careful, you gotta be wise. Yeah, yeah, because we see that even Christ, you know what I mean? He had his three that he was closer with. Mm -hmm. So I heard, I heard somebody say the other day, I was I was bugging, man. It was crazy. He said, "You gotta be careful who you take." He said because if if Christ would have took Timothy into the uh, the garden with him. He said, you don't even know. He might have ran out the garden and been like, yo, bro, they got Jesus in here sweating blood. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He might have yeah. went and told because not everybody can handle everything. That's right. That's um, right. But being that everybody can't handle everything, you need to find somebody because God always provides somebody that can handle everything. That's um, right. And so that you can get whatever you got going on out, man, so it's exposed and it's brought to the light so it can die. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, We got a question here, man. I'm looking on the live feed. We got a question for you, man. And and um, I, it's something that I've admired about you a lot. It's just how you um, you posture yourself and, and how you're just, you seem, always seem like even kill. You know what I'm saying? So bro, Brother Daniel said um, to ask if you can kind of speak about that, man. How do you, how do you posture yourself? And, and then we can kind of go from there and talk, and talk about leadership because I think posturing is part of leadership, right? And, and, and so if you can dialogue about posturing yourself and then um, also dialogue a little bit about leadership because i know you've you've done some um some leadership training um and you train other leaders and it's crazy because it's actually really good timing because i had preached about influence yesterday and and one of the points i made about influence was that when you're a person of influence other people of influence 
will submit to your influence. You see what I'm saying? So can you dialogue about that a little bit, your posturing, and then go into a little bit about like leadership skills and, and, and sort of like your platform with that? Yeah, no. Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Brother Daniel. Yes, uh, my, my man. <laughs> Daniel Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. Nah, he's a good dude, man. He's a beast on that piano, too. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he <laughs> is. Um, but nah, so anyway, it's crazy that you say this because posture to me, man, just how I handle myself, it's, I don't even know how to put my finger on it to really, I, I'm glad he actually said this because I'm, I'm going to have to take time to really think about how I'm going to explain this the next time it gets asked. But when I think about it, it's crazy because I have people come up to me often and I never really paid attention to it, but they would always say whether it was at work, or speaking or whatever they're always like listen bro like you just feel like you just be chill <laughs> like, yeah 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 you just be you just be chill like and i you know people saw me in situations where we had to break up crazy fights at, at my job and and they saw me speaking in front of thousands of people and i don't say that to toot my own horn but a lot of times people just see this consistent chill mm-hmm. and um it's not a cockiness or anything mm-hmm. like that i think what happened is um along the way man I think I got so let down by getting high so many times, um, by letting myself get too high in certain places. And then I also found myself in very depressed situations when I let myself get too low. Yeah. And so I don't remember exactly when it happened, but I remember along the way I made it a point. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna get too high and, and I'm not gonna get too low. Like I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay right in the middle. Like yeah. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm going to appreciate it. I'm going to walk in joy and, and, and have fun and joke and all that kind of stuff and do my thing. But I'm never going to let myself get out of get out of place because I feel like if you get too far left or get too far right, man, you can find yourself in some um, some bad places. Yeah. Yeah. You never want to get too high with the highs or too low with the lows, man. You just always want to stay even keel. And that's just a, a, a that's a revelation of somebody's character. You know what I'm saying? Like like just what you're talking about, man, you know. So, so how does that how does that equate to leadership, man? Being a leader, um, I know you've done some leadership trainings. You got the, um, your Quinspiration. Can you talk talk about that, man? Let's 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 dialogue on that because I've always been in the leadership. I'm a big like I'm a big avid reader. I like John Maxwell and all that. Um, you know, he's one of the guys I like to read a lot, especially with you know him being a pastor, Wesleyan pastor. And I actually, when I came back to Christ. Um, and as an adult, you know what I'm saying? I actually, I got baptized and gave my life to Christ while I was in the Wesleyan church. You see what I'm saying? So, um, you know, so I have an affinity for John Maxwell and, and from coming from the insurance industry and building agencies and stuff like that. So talk, can you talk a little bit about leadership, um, uh, and, and, and just any words of wisdom or, or encouragement that you have for the listeners and for the watchers? about leadership and about training and about uh, um, some of the things that you do in terms of that. Yeah. So as we all know, because you're a John Maxwell fan too, he, he talks about leadership as influence. Influence. There you go. Right. So to me, ever since I heard that, I always said in order to have that influence, you got to be consistent. Yep. So I think that if there's one thing that I think I've been throughout my life is it, consistent. You know what I mean? We all, every single one of us, um, that are living right now, we all go through different times. You know what I mean? Things come our way. Uh, a lot of times we don't raise our hand for challenges that, that, that pick us. You know what I mean? Um, we didn't pick the Corona. You know what I mean? This challenge picked us. Yeah. And so even throughout my, my life, the one thing that, like I said, that I think that I want to say that I, I, I would say separates me a lot of times is I done been through some stuff like all of us, but if you go, you don't see me just becoming different people along my journey. It don't mean that the struggle wasn't real. It doesn't mean that I didn't fall and had to get back up and get right with God. It don't mean any of that. But it just means that I realized that, you know what, as a leader, I got to stay consistent. I got to make a choice to say, if I'm going to say, raise my hand and say, I'm going to be a leader, like I got to stick to the commitment. And I think a long time ago, I made a choice to not let feelings leave my life not let feelings lead your life yeah 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 i didn't let feelings lead my That's life man, because uh um i'm just being real like i was tired today right and this is being 100 percent transparent yeah i was tired had it been up to my feelings right i would just want to sleep and probably could have missed this call mm-hmm. but it wasn't about my feelings it was about listen i made a commitment to, a, to my brother mm-hmm. and i know there's some people that even if there's one out there that's going to listen there's somebody that needs something that we're going to say tonight 
Amen. So I think a lot of times where people find themselves not having influence or not feeling like they have anybody to lead, it's not that people don't want to follow them or it's not that they don't have people in their life that they can lead. It's just that they're not consistent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that would be that would be my encouragement is to check your consistency. Go down mm -hmm. your Facebook, go down your Facebook feed. Think about your think about your life. You know what I mean? Look at your look at your phone. I mean, look who you look who you talk to. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, look who you talk to. Look at, like, are you consistent? And if you're not, would you follow you? Yeah. One of the things I used to do when I used to hire people, man, when I had uh, my agency before I kind of moved out here, we, we the first thing I would do is once we got a, a, a resume is I would go right to their Facebook, man, and try, to, and try to look and see what was going on in their Facebook. And people don't understand the importance of social media. And I'm hoping they're starting to learn it now. But the things you put out there, they out there forever. You know, so you might be able to read, race and delete it, but it's there. And like even my my brother's a, a football coach at a a school in uh, in Pittsburgh that's in the PSAC. Um, and um, one of the things they do, they always check people's social media before they offer kids scholarships, man. So um, it's important to make sure that we are high level people of, of of character, and that's what you're talking about with influence there and and character and being even keel and not getting too high and not getting too low. These are all synonymous terms with just having good character, man. And 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 for us, our character comes from Christ. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's walking like Christ, talking like Christ, doing the things that Christ did um, and, and, and doing because he said that he we, we would do greater works than what he did. But if we are not people of high integrity and, and not saying that we have to be perfect, because look, Peter lied, right, right, and cursed. So he wasn't perfect. Right. Uh, um, we see all different. Paul, he, he, he was killing Christians, but yet and still it came to a point where Christ came into their lives um, in, in a, in a trans, um, transcending way. And their character changed to that, which would be something that would represent Christ. Amen. No, that's right. You're right on it. Yeah. Yeah. So you um, you did a, a, a leadership, not a leadership, but you did the, the graduation for. Um, York High, man, you spoke there at their commencement. How was that, man? Doc, can you, can you talk about that for a little bit? That must have been awesome. Man, I love that. That was uh, out of everywhere I spoke, and, I, and I, I'm thankful, you know, that I've been invited to a couple places now. Uh, that by far was, was special, you know, and it's crazy because actually I've been thinking a lot about York High lately, just with the class of 2020, like my heart really goes out for them because I, I, I can't imagine, you know, putting in that much effort and going through everything you did. And then being at it's this rough. time right now, bro, where it's like, it's not looking too good for that. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, you know I mean, and so, and being that I was a part of it the way I was, like, I know how special it really is. So, like, I'm praying, man, that something, first of all, before I even talk on it, that something happens, you know, that they're able to get celebrated. So, um, with that being said, yeah, bro, it was the best, it was, it was, it was by far the, the best memory in terms of speaking that I had. And it was so crazy because I don't want to get into it, but, I ended up, I was in the city my whole life, went all the way through city schools, went up to York High all the way until the end of my uh, 11th grade year. And then I ended up going to West York. Okay. Like, it is what it is. It's a part of my story now. Everything happens for a reason. But I always felt like even though I had a good time and I understand why things happened the way they did, being in the city my whole life, it was like, wow, I went all the way until my 11th grade year. And I, I felt like a York, like I am from York, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just like grew up, but I didn't graduate as a York High Bearcat. And mm -hmm. so I always kind of felt like stuff that was missing from me. And, and it was just so crazy how years and years later, man, that guy would turn it around, that he would have me go back. Because I always wanted to see what it was like to be on that stage, you know, walking across mm -hmm. with York High. And not only would he have me on the stage, he would have me speak and be able to encourage the class. So it was, uh, awesome. it was crazy, bro. Like that was, it was dope. Awesome, awesome, man. That's that that that's always, believe it or not, that's always something that I've wanted to do, man. But be able to one day speak at a commencement, man. So that that's just that's awesome. I remember um, when I I don't know if you had just got the word, but I remember you texted me at some point and was like, "Yo, pray for you, man," because you had you, you that was going on, you know. So you know, we was uh. We was there with you in spirit, brother. No, nah, and I felt that, man. That was uh, that was a blessing. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I was I was looking on your website, um, qhoward.com, right? And and I came across an article 
that you wrote, man. And, and I wanted to read it, read a little bit of it and maybe have you kind of talk about it a little bit because it really, it really touched me, man. Um, you know, to my core when I read it. And I and I can almost feel like I don't I can almost feel like the release of like pain, but then also like a joy that came with it, like a settling in. And and I want to read it to you if you're okay with that. No, I'm good, bro. <laughs> this right. is loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We live. Yeah, exactly. I, I know you would be good. You know, that that's like my um my journalism question. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Trying to win. laughs> so it, it was I am who I am. You wrote it on September 30th for 2019. Uh it says today was the first time in a while that I was asked the uh the what are you question. Um when I got back in my car, I went down memory lane. For a minute it was a reminder of how far i have come as a man with knowing my identity for many years of my life as a biracial man i was trapped behind the mindset of i'm not white enough to be white but not black enough to be black i used to look in the mirror at what i thought was a confused look i was confused on why god would make me look the way i did so i fell into the trap of living as a confused person I tried many different things to fit in, only to still feel left out. The question I asked myself often was, where do I fit in? My whole life changed the day I figured out we're not supposed to fit in. We're supposed to be us. There is only one me, just like there is only one you. Can you um can you dialogue on that, man? That's that's powerful, brother. <laughs> man, that's deep, man. This is yeah. that's deep. This is this is one of them subjects, bro, where it's this one is it's touching to me because it was it's it's been a journey. And I was I'd be a liar if I'd be sitting here talking to you saying that I'm a hundred percent free and that I don't struggle at all anymore with it. Yeah. Um it goes back to what I said earlier. Like you can be delivered from drinking, right? Mm -hmm. And again, this is I don't want people to feel like I'm coming at them, <laughs> but you can be delivered from it, but it don't mean that those thoughts ain't gonna still pop up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's gonna it, it's gonna be a war. Like it's gonna you're gonna wrestle. You're gonna wrestle yeah. with that. So I don't know if you well you do remember at the beginning when I kept playing around with you about the lighting. Yeah, yeah. Like that was a mo see, it's it's still little moments mm -hmm. where a little where a thought will pop up and it'll 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 be wow. and I gotta I gotta catch it. Yeah. And I yeah, say, wow. where where is that coming from? So we you know, even though we were joking, yeah. there was What's the that, root? Was coming, that was yeah. coming from somewhere. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. What I'm so that that's always been, man that was that was a, a long time like struggling with that bro it was just crazy because it's like here i have my dad my dad is black man he's a black man bald head black man like mm -hmm. like legit blood test this is my pops like yeah, ain't yeah, no yeah. is that his really pops like no nah, it's my pops yeah um and this is my mom and she's a very fair-skinned white lady with yeah. you know blue eyes so I, I i came out looking the way I did, but I just felt like what you read was was my was my journey, man. It was mm -hmm. just I didn't understand why I had to go through all that, man. I didn't understand like any of the 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 struggle, <laughs> but I realized years later, like I said, now I can look back and say, "Wow, God, like forgive me for questioning you, man. Forgive me for not so much for questioning because I know that's that's relationship, but forgive me for not thinking that you knew what you were doing." Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you know what's even crazy, bro, is that I, I might have shared this for like two or three people. I'll never forget I was in that business I told you about. We were going to another conference. Now, this wasn't a conference when I gave my life. We just going back sure. to another conference because it was happening every couple months. Mm -hmm. So I'm riding down with this one couple, and it was crazy because we started talking about prayer. Now, again, I'm still at the beginning of my journey, so I'm still like, man, I don't really pray all the time yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. They, were like, they were like prayer warriors. They were okay. so like they were so much prayer warriors, bro. Like I, that was the first time that I in my life like physically was with people that I believe believed in prayer like no other. And so I remember like in this conversation, they were like, "Hey, do you want you know do you want kids someday?" I was like, "Yeah." They were like, "How many?" I'm like, "I really don't know how many kids I want. Like I definitely want a son though." Like yeah. I remember saying that, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Okay, like how would he look?" And I'm like, "What? Like how would he look?" They were like. Yeah, I want you to describe. I want you. I want you to describe. Like, what? What would you want your son to look like? Like, how? Mm. What does your son look like that you want? And bro, I'll be honest with you, it felt weird when they were saying yeah. it to me. But I, I knew that they weren't weird. So I was yeah. like, it feels weird, but they're not weird. So let me just rock with it. 
Yeah. And so long story short, I started describing the son that looked exactly like me, bro. Like it was just like, they got me to a place where I was like seeing this little me. I'm like, man, wow. he would be the same skin complexion. He would have the same color eyes. Like, and I'm just like, like describing him to the T. Yeah. Bro, this is like, I'm talking about, this is like seven years before my son, my first son came. Wow. When I, when my first son came, bro, I'm in the hospital. Of course, you know, you're going through all the emotion. Like I'm scared to death. Like I really don't want to look at him coming out. Like I'm like, man, this is crazy. This experience is so crazy. Yeah. But when I seen him, you know, I was like, wow, I really got a son. So I wasn't thinking about anything at that moment, except for just living in that moment. Yeah. But as I came down from everything that I was going through in my mind and I began to think about, wow, there's literally a dude here now that is mine. A little like, you. Yeah. A little me. So, bro, as time started to go on and his, and his, his features started to come in and he started, you know, developing into what he looks like now, it's like God brought that back to me. Mm. And, 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 and I remember God, because God speaks to me a lot downloading stuff to me. Yeah, I mean, my wife gets a lot of like dreams. He does, I don't get a lot of dreams, but I get a lot of downloads. Okay. So I remember being a prayer and 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 God speaking to me right on the spot and downloading it into my spirit, and He brought back that conversation. And bro, I had tears in my eyes, and I'm like, Wow, God! Wow. I thought that you made a mistake, and God told me like, not only did I did I not make a mistake, I had to give you a little dude that looked just like you, so you know that I didn't make no mistake. Yeah, like I yeah. like this look. This is how yeah. it's supposed. To, this is what I wanted you to have. This is what yeah. I wanted. And bro, it was just like. It was like another moment where I was like, God, like, man, I love you. Like, man, thank you for yeah. loving me. And I'm, I'm, man, I'm hard headed. I'm difficult. But I realized, bro, to, to wrap up so I can hear what you want to say next, that discovering who I was on the inside was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to me. Yeah. And yeah. I was far from perfect and I'm still far from perfect. Yeah, but that was a time of growth for you, man. Like, I really believe that the Lord utilized that couple there as weapons of righteousness right where he was using them to get you to appreciate yourself you see what i'm saying because in, in describing your son you're describing your image you know your genes but he, you know your, your son he looks like you man and 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 so in that i think they were god was polite placed them there for you to get some self-love for yourself as well you know what i'm saying in a time where maybe maybe it wasn't all the way there or you know maybe you were still working things out but um, I do believe that God often will put people in our lives that'll stretch us. You know what I mean? That'll cause us to, you know, I always like to say the blessing is outside of our comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? So they were stretching you and getting you, like you said, it was uncomfortable. But from knowing them, you know that it wasn't, you know, they weren't coming at you in a malicious way. You know, and that was just the spirit of God working it out. And, and, and I think it was just allowing you to grow, man, and get to where, you, you know, as a stepping stone to be where you are today and to be the type of father that you are. Amen, bro. I appreciate that. And I agree. It's crazy because even though they did that, I like there was probably like a 1% a chance that I even thought that that was going to become true. Mm. Like I remember like leaving on being like, all right, they cool or whatever. And I'm like, all right, it is what it is. Like, I'm never going to think about this again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. It, it, and God showed me, man, how powerful prayers are. Like your words, man. If there's anything that I can look back and have a moment where I can see the power of words, like I can always look back to that and say, I may have had that that faith the size of that mustard seed at that moment. Yeah. It may even be smaller than mustard seed. Yeah. But but God took my little bit of one percent belief <laughs> that maybe this could happen someday mm -hmm. in a car where nobody knew I was talking to him in private, and then publicly one day bring that word forward. Man, it was yeah. just it's crazy. That's awesome, man. And, and, and that's just it. Just um kind of reiterates. Um, something I was talking about in the church. I did in a, I did a series before the, this before the Corona. I did a series on finding your identity in Christ, and and one of the things I talked about was how the gospel supersedes all social economic, all ethnic backgrounds, skin tone, color, right side of the uh, track, left side of the track. You know, Christ supersedes all that, and and to be able to dialogue with people that look like you or that don't look like you right and even when when that was the great thing about christianity as it was spreading in and in, in throughout the first century right uh pre-325 council of nicaea just to, for the haters on christianity you know what i'm saying it was spreading through the first century you understand so um as it was spreading uh, uh religions were really ethnically based around that like you could look at a, at a particular tribe or culture of people and 
and kind of deduce who their God was. But the thing Christianity was that as it was spreading, um, it was spreading, it, you know, it was Africa um, evangelizing uh, Europe. It was Africa evangelizing Asia and, and, and the gospel spread. And you got to see like, like even when you read the book of Acts, Acts chapter two, it was Libyans, it was Medes, it was uh, people from Cappadocia, it was people from Greece, Italy, Rome, Jews. It was all types of people there. And it just shows that the gospel is all encompassing, man. And I think that's just the power of Christ, man. So even in in your in your background and who you are, you you represent Christ in that, man. Hey, Amen. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. So so you said you got what? You got three three sons? Two sons? No, I got I got two sons, and then uh, I was blessed, man, with a daughter that I didn't know I would have, but God had her waiting for me. Amen. 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 That's what's up, man. Amen. Amen. So yeah, um, I know we had a couple questions, man. Let me see. Let me see what people were saying, man. I thought I seen a couple questions. Sister Susan's on. She's she's up. She's on here. Um, God bless you, Sister Susan. I thought I saw. I got my phone. Question. I got my phone tilted, so I can't even see any of the comments right yeah, now. Yeah, that's why I had pulled. I had pulled mine out. That's why I kind of went off before, man. Um, both called brother Nate, Nate Night watching brother Sharif on here. What's up, people? God bless y'all, man. God bless you. Anything else you think you want to share, man? Let's talk about. Um, you know, Christ, man, what's your, what's your, um, what's your favorite text, man? And how does that kind of, uh, shape who you are and how you view life, man? Uh, man, Philippians 4.13. There you go. <laughs> I had to learn that that was the breaking point for me. Yeah. Uh, because up until that point, it was that identity struggle. It was, you know, going off of what other people thought, just fighting that word. That's where I found myself, like I said earlier, um, getting too high at times and getting too low at other times. Um. And I didn't think about it until right now, and I thank God for giving it to me. But that was a major, major part of me finding that even kill. Because I realized that it humbled me when I realized that, first of all, it was never me when I thought I was on my high. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know what I mean? And I found out that I ain't strong enough when I'm in my lows. That's right. And so figuring out that greater heat that lives on the inside of me, you know what I mean? That that was the, the best thing I could have discovered. So yeah, Philippians 4.13, man, you already know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So that's, that's right. always um, where I found myself weak, he is strong. So that that's my go-to. Okay, amen. That's a, I love Philippians, man. That, that's one of my um my favorites, man. Just the whole book, man. Just be, even though Paul was in jail, just rejoicing. You know, I don't know how many times the word rejoices in there, but, uh, but Paul was able to rejoice even through all things. And, and that's a good... Um, good thought to lead into nowadays, man, like with all this craziness, the COVID-19 and, you know, all this craziness, man. Um, how do you, how do you view it from a Christian uh, standpoint? How do you view it from a, a leader? Um, you know, uh, is this the end of the world? You know what I mean? Is this one of the, one of the seals? Like, you know, how do you kind of, what's your view on this? What's your, what's your take on this whole current event situation we in right now um, and my take is that we're in a, a, a time of warning uh, I don't believe it's the end uh, Amen. But, I, I, but I do I do believe it's a warning yeah. uh, and a chance for people to get their stuff together yeah it's, it's so, birth pangs yeah 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 so it's it, it's time whether people are seeing it or not or they miss it they can never sit back and say they didn't have the opportunity so with that being said as a as a kingdom believer I believe that um, the word of God says that the earth is waiting for the sons of God to reveal themselves. So I believe right now, and I heard some guy talk about this the other day. Mm -hmm. He was saying how um, right now is the time for kingdom believers not to look for ways to capitalize on people that you're trying to literally take from them. But people are going to be more open than ever, and they're expecting you, and you would be selfish if you're not taking all your experience and everything that God has given you and taking you through and offering them kingdom breakthroughs at discounted prices. That's good. And so I look at it right now, man, is um, this is a time where it's like, man, listen, this, this is, we were, we've been working hard for, for, for this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. Um, I don't want to put it into a perspective of like a basketball game, but no, it's one ahead, of the things like, listen, bro, we're going to be out here training, running hills, doing all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Staying up late, studying film, doing all this. All right, listen, here, we, we getting ready to play the game now. It's the championship right here. Yeah, yeah, just the game. So it's like, are you going to go out and bring your game? And so I believe that it's um, 
it's a time to see who's really living this thing and who was faking it. Yeah. Who yeah. who really was only looking to be a performer on Sundays mm -hmm. versus who really wanted to live this thing through the week and get creative and figure out that it was never about a building. There you go. That's right. It's never been about a building, man. And, and even that you say that, like I know, I think we dialogued a little bit about that now's the time you're going to be able to see who the real leaders are in the gospel, man. Because, um, you know, man, that's one of the things that turned, turned me off about church and and turns me off now about it, which I try to counteract um, with the, with the, our presentation, the believers in Christ from our church, our presentation of the gospel. And not that the gospel changes, we could just, you know, we're, we're, I'm very, I'm very conservative on the word, but I'm, I'm very progressive in the presentation. And, you know, you ain't got no, uh, you ain't got no organist, you know, the preacher ain't got no organist right now. They don't got no touch your neighbor three times. They ain't got none of that right. They ain't got no, you know what I mean? The, the, the hooping don't sound is clear. You know what I mean? So it's like now you, it's you, the, your Bible, and your camera. And, and can you teach the word of God? Can you rightly divide the word of truth um, so that people will be compelled to want the Holy Spirit? Or people will be compelled to give their lives to Christ? It's not about the show. It's not about the hoop. It's not about the organ behind you. All that's cool, right? You know, in Christendom. But now it's you, the word, and the people of God. And can you, min like, like when I think about Peter, when Peter gave the first Christian sermon in Acts chapter 2, it said 3,000 people got saved. Peter ain't had no organ. Peter ain't had no band. Peter ain't had no praise and worship leader. Peter ain't had none of that. Peter had him. He didn't even have a Bible. You know what I'm saying? He had the scriptures memorized. And he had that. And he would, and 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ. And, and, and this is a time, I believe, when we have to rightly divide the word of truth, where we have to um, come up with on time, like you said, download, I, I love that word, where the Holy Spirit has to download um, um, uh, on time words, messages, man, we can't eat off yesterday's man. We need on time bread, today's word to empower the people. Um, um, and not only just the believer, but the non-believer, because non-believers are plugging in now. Because they could, it, you know, we're so inundated with services that the non-believers are going to come in and look and see what you have, what what does your God say? And when we just, when 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 some folk are used to just reciting the scripture and getting aroused out of people because the people know the scripture, we are ministering to people in some cases that don't know nothing about the word. They don't, they don't read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They read in us what we giving them and how is that going to make it, how is that going to um affect their lives especially in a time period like now but we can we have the source of where to direct them to so i, I mean i don't know i, I know i kind of talk a lot sometimes man what, what are your thoughts nah, on you're that, good bro, bro. <laughs> you're good but now what you're saying is right it's crazy because like as you were talking i was thinking about like when we would go to basketball tournaments mm -hmm. you always had a chance you know what i mean to see the other teams and and i remember at a lot of tournaments like seeing different teams where they out there kind of like showing off a little bit. You see a certain dude that's out there like getting buckets against a certain team. And you mm -hmm. can tell like he's like feeling himself. And mm -hmm. I remember in my mind saying like, bro, listen, when we play, that's all getting shut down. Like as soon as, soon as you play against somebody that can really hoop, yeah. it's going to be a wrap, bro. It's, it's going to come a time. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come a time where you're going to have to really hoop against people that can hoop. And all that extra stuff you was doing, we're going to see if that was for real. Yeah. And so I'm saying that because the book of Ecclesiastics says there's a time for everything. Come on. Yeah, you know I mean, there was yeah. a time to play around and get people to buildings and do whatever you wanted to do and manipulate and play the game and yeah. you know what I mean and not really live it. Yeah. And now we're in a season where you ain't got all that like you just described. That's right. So now it's like you gotta leave that that pulpit. Now you gotta come into the marketplace and mm. now you're starting to see like, oh, I, I don't really got a lot of influence that i thought i had it in this pulpit as i do in this now i gotta be real because these people ain't used to just believing everything i said the, or, the organ do a lot bro <laughs> yeah they do a lot so like yeah bro it's a um it's a time and a place and i believe that like i said i'm not perfect you're not perfect we mm -hmm. all struggle That's we right. all fall short but i believe people are not looking for perfection people looking are for looking reality for, for truth man they're looking for something they can feel like i yeah. i told my boy earlier i got this um program that i'm invested in and they're doing they they replaced the march madness basketball tournament 
Okay. They, they replaced it for um, March Madness speaker tournament. Okay. And, and it's crazy. So they got it all like mapped out, like the 64 tournament and everything, bro. They got okay. you guys speaking against another person. We like with Jays. Yeah, bro. Like it's like crazy. You got to speak and then people vote. And then if you win, you go to the second round. Okay. And so I, I, I didn't know when I looked at the first round, like what they were looking for, I must have misread it. So when I did my video, <clears throat> I did it good. But I didn't, there were some parts I missed, and that's my fault because I read it quick. But the dude that I was up against, this is my point, the dude that I was up against, I could tell that he read the whole way, he read the thing the whole way through. So mm. he had everything read, right? Like he had all his stuff together. But here's, here, here was the difference. Here's why, why I ended up winning. They could feel me. Even though I didn't have it all together, they could feel me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so yeah, yeah, people yeah. are not looking for the person who read, you know, every book in the library right now. Like, that's yeah. cool. We should all yep. be developing. You can read every book in the library and people still not feel you. That's you can right. walk around. They used to say in multi-level marketing, you can walk around and be knowledge constipated. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. you, and you, you, you could, your, your head could have yep. a stomach. Yeah. They say, like, pe- people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah, yeah. So that's, so that's the bottom line is that, like, I even saw in that example recently, like, hey, they really was feeling... They was feeling, not that I was anything special, but they was feeling what I was saying versus his robotic doing everything right message. Mm-hmm. So that's what people are looking for, man. That hooting and hollering, bro, they're not looking for that. They're looking not at right now. I, I got I got a real life. Like, speak to me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 that first day back when the church is open up, they might be looking oh, for yeah. that. that. That's going to be the they day. Gonna, they gonna, yeah. They yeah. That's going to be the day. But, bro, I think it's going to be, I think coming out of this, it's going to be one of the greatest revivals we've ever seen. Amen. Yeah, I agree. I do believe that, man. I believe that people are going to come out of this and say, like, wow, like, I really do got to change some things. Yeah, yeah. They do. I, I, I 100% agree with you, my brother. I 100% think that this is a time where God is really going to save uh, a lot of folk, man. A lot of the people that are teetering on the fence, you know, I'm, you know, it, I, I grew up in church, but I'm not feeling church. I don't go to church no more. Or those that that strayed away, I believe God is going to begin to call those sheep back into the fold, man. You know, because it it, it it was, and like you said, this is the time, man. I I was speaking to a pastor friend of mine the other day, and it's like exactly what you said. We were just like, yo, this is it. Like this is what all the studying, this is what all the praying, this is what all the gap. This is what it, for times like this, man. And 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 going kind of circle back. This is how, this is where leadership and influence has to prevail. Character has to prevail. And it's not just from the pastors. It's everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because we're all the same in Christ. There's no, God has no respect to person. So I don't care what your title is. Pastor, minister, reverend, you know, fifth bishop of the fourth region of Neptune. It don't really matter what your title is. What matters is, is um, that we represent Christ. Um, and, and that as we represent him, um, it's appealing to others. Just like you said in the beginning, you said to present Christ in a way that is appealing to people because it, 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 it's like you said, Paul became all things that, uh, uh, that I may win. That, that, that Paul said, I became all things that I may win some. Meaning that, you know, to the Jew, he was able to get into the law and show him in the Torah, look, this is Christ. He, to the Gentile, he was able to show how the crowd, how Christ was. Um, um, for all people, you know what I'm saying, that the God of the Jew came down and put on flesh and did this for all humanity, Being, you know, tracing it back to Abraham, because Abraham wasn't a Jew, right? So we, so this is the day um, that we got to be on point and ready as believers, from the person that sits in the back to all the way to the pulpit, we just got to be on point and represent Christ to the fullest. No, I, I agree with you, bro, and I'm glad you said that, because I think sometimes People get caught up in titles, and as we talked about earlier, and this ain't even about, we don't even got to talk about being a minister or anything like that, because at the end of the day, when I went, I'm, I'm going to use the example, when I went and spoke at the graduation, I wasn't up there preaching, so to speak, with scripture or anything like that. I'm just talking about real life to them. Yeah. I, was meeting them I was meeting them where they are. Yeah. When, I, when I had the chance to go into you know corporate America and be able to do some training, I wasn't in there throwing scriptures i was in there you know what i mean just being authentic and just giving them what they needed but my point is this everywhere i went this is crazy man everywhere i went i had at least one person now of course it's going to be more at the graduation because you got a larger crowd but even when i was in corporate america i didn't say not one scripture 
but had one person come up to me at the end and say, I know you talked about like leadership and stuff, but hey, are you are you like a pastor or something? I don't know, it's something, something different. And it was crazy. And I don't say that to toot my horn, but what I'm saying is that that shows that they're not looking just for pet. They're looking for people that are walking around filled. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and I remember there was, a, um, I can't, I, I forget who said it, but there was some man in my life who said, always let your, your greatest message be the life you live. That's right. Mm. You know what I mean? And, um, and so that's what it is, man. Just, you know what I mean? Always, and, and, and you're going to fall, but it's not about that. Get up and keep moving. They're not looking for perfection. Again, it goes back to they're looking for real. That's it. That's it. I agree. And they're not looking for people so high that they can't touch. You know what I'm saying? They want to be able to dialogue, have a cup of coffee with, you know, well, not right now. You know, we got the social distancing thing, but they want to build a dialogue with you, man, and just and, and, and ask tough questions. And, and, and we have to be able to have responses for tough questions. You know what I mean? And, and, and sometimes, you know, of course, we always want to get back to the word. But sometimes you, you, you got to go around the word to get back to it, depending on who you're dealing with. Like you said, you was in corporate America. You was minister, you, you, you were ministering basically at the, um, at the graduation. But you didn't have to Bible bash nobody for them to see and recognize your character as a Christian. You know, they didn't have to, uh, you know, people assumed you were a man of God just by the way you carry yourself. I heard a woman of God say a long time ago, she said, sometimes we got to smuggle God in. Ah, that's good. You know what I mean? And it's not about hiding him, but sometimes we got to smuggle him in. Mm -hmm. and so I believe there's a time to smuggle and then there's opportunities where, you know what I mean, you can bring him straight out the bag. That's it. That's it, man. Bring out the heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, uh, everything ain't for everybody at the, you know, at the same time. That's right. That's right, man. Well, well I really appreciate you, bro. You have no idea, man. I, I thank you, man, for, you know, rocking out with me, man. I think we've been a little over an hour, man. I don't, I know you got things to do with, with, the, with the, the family and whatnot. Um, is there any uh, kind of final thoughts you want to share with the people, man? Maybe, uh, you know, a, a, a short kind of uh, uh, some uplifting for the people, you know, in these last uh, uh, last few minutes, man. Anything you want to share, brother? Yeah, I, um, I said this the other day. I feel like saying it again is going to encourage some people uh, that may not have heard it. But I was out and I had to go get something for our son, our baby. So I'm driving back. This dude is like behind me. It's one of them guys that, for whatever reason, man, I guess he felt like I should be going 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah, so he went around me. Of course, he speeds by me. Uh, back in the day, bro, I probably would have tried to race him or eyeball him at the light that we ended up at. But I just, I, like I said in this uh, video I made, I was just laughing, man. Like, that stuff is funny to me now. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he had a sticker on his car. He had a NASCAR sticker. And I, and I told him what I shared on the video was that, at, at the light, God started showing me about this NASCAR, and I started thinking about how he went around me so fast. He got a NASCAR sticker. So now I'm, like, thinking about NASCAR, even though I'm not a NASCAR guy. Okay. Um, and even though I was a basketball and a football guy, of course, I knew what NASCAR racing was. And the one thing that I shared that I always noticed, you know, when I would peek at the TV here and there and see a NASCAR race, is no matter how fast these cars were going, eventually they had to go into the pit stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I said, it don't matter. It don't matter if they was Dell Earnhardt and uh -huh. everybody had the T-shirt and everybody had the flags. I don't care how bad somebody wanted them to win. Eventually, they were going to have to slow down and come into that pit stop. Mm. And I said, when they went into the pit stop, it didn't matter how good their tires were. It didn't matter how big their sponsor was. They was going to have to switch some things out. Yeah. And so That's what good. I wanted to encourage the people with is right now, I believe God has us all in our pit stop. Mm. And I don't know if it's the tires that need switched in your life. I don't know if it's the, the association that you need to switch. I don't know if it's the career, but you do. And whatever it is that you need to switch and shift out. So when you get back into the race, because you're going to get back into the race. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, the race is going to continue. But when you get back on the track, if you go back with the same flat tires, you ain't going to make it too long. That's right. So I would encourage you while you're in this pit stop to not just be caught up on Netflix or just kind of sleeping and just letting it go by. Like, that's cool <laughs> to do those things. But make sure that you're also making time to figure out what is it that you need to change. So when you get back into the race, you're ready to go win uh, yeah. for you and your family and be able to help other people as well. That's awesome, man. That's an awesome word, brother. It's like uh, it's like socially distancing for spiritual development. You know what I mean? That that that's that's awesome, man. That's an awesome uh, awesome word for the people that that we can close out on, man. So um, again, brother, I'm just. Man, we want to do this again, man. I I, I, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you too, man. It was good.
Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. So uh, to the people listening, those are going to watch later on YouTube and all that, this is I Am Pastor Matt with Believers in Christ Church, the people's pastor. This is Saints in Society, where we just like to dialogue with different saints in the community um, and, and just see how the Lord has, uh, has helped move them in their lives. So um, you can check us out on our Facebook page, Believers in Christ Church. Um, you can look us up on, uh, we just got a new Instagram page at uh, Believers in Christ. Uh, I think it's B-I-C underscore York. Um, you can also find us on YouTube. You can like and subscribe to our YouTube page at uh, B -I uh, Believers in Christ Church. Um, you can also go to our website. We have a new website, Believers in Christ. It's B-I-C York.org. It's under construction. You can put your information in there, your email, and it'll keep you informed on different things that, that uh, are coming up once the website is up. And you can also email us at bicyork at gmail.com. That's bicyork at gmail.com. That way you can get on our email list. Just put in the subject, sign me up, and uh, you'll get on our email blast. We'll send you out new content that we have coming out. My wife is doing a show called Flourishing for the Women. We're also doing a, a show we did uh, last week, um, and, and we'll be coming out with more content on that called Believers in Love, uh, where my wife and I will just be dialoguing about relationships. Uh, we'll be back here next week at five for, um, on Tuesday at 545 with our next show of, of Saints and Society. And uh, Brother Quinn, do you want to uh, give them your information on Minister Quinn? I'm sorry, you want to give them your information <laughs> it's on, good, on, on <laughs> <laughs> it's a, but now the easiest way to be honest with you, the easiest way to follow me is on social media here. Um, mm -hmm. just I'm sure I'm I'm gonna be tagged on this video, so just you know, what I mean, yeah. add me, follow me, we can stay in communication that way. Yeah. Uh, if you want to email me if there's something that you know, maybe. Uh, I shared that maybe you want deeper insight on or, you know, you want dialogue more about, you can email me. Um, that's going to be at Quinn, Q-U-I-N-N -N, at QHoward.com. Again, that's Quinn, Q-U-I-N-N -N, at QHoward.com. Um, but other than that, man, let's just uh, keep winning and make yeah. sure, again, that we come out of this better and ready to get back in the race. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. I really can't thank you enough. Um, remember, people, the Bible tells us that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I pray the Lord bless thee and keep thee in Jesus' name. Go and be a blessing in Jesus' name. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you, man. God I bless you, man. You All right, bro.